the flagship of the fleet which took part in the amphibious landings 30 years ago was HMS Fearless. On board was a man who later went on to become commander of British forces South Atlantic Islands. A little earlier, Commodore Philip Thickness came into the studio and told me about his memories of the war at this point 30 years ago. Well, I'm serving in HMS Fearless uh, and we are in San Carlos Water, which the press um, comes called Bomb Alley. Uh, and we have endured um, several days of, of um, endless air raids, it seems. I'm sure they weren't, but you know, that's the memory. Uh, and there are lulls when the weather's bad ashore or with us when we get, when we get a break. But um, still, a lot of air activity going on. Uh, and meantime, trying to move troops and uh, stores ashore to support the battle that's beginning to be fought from ashore and this breakout from San Carlos, which obviously starts with, with Goose Green and then develops as, as the Marines set off on the northern route to Teal Inlet. At the time, was there ever any doubt as to whether or not this mission would work? Did you ever get the sense that people were being sent on a suicide mission? Definitely not a suicide mission. I think at the end of the first day, on the 21st in San Carlos, I suspect that many of us probably had one or two worrying moments because it had been a hell of a day. And, you know, the scene around the water after the final wave of air raids was quite depressing. You know, there was um, ardent outside burning and you could see the smoke and we had on the inside uh, Antrim, I think a couple of the LSLs had been hit, certainly one or two of the frigates had been hit and, and you know, carnage all over the place. And I think that evening, I certainly uh, wasn't sure, but amazingly, the next day, the weather's bad on the mainland in Argentina and so we're given a, uh, a break and I think just that day allowed us to consolidate, patch up our wounds, get an enormous amount of stuff and people ashore. And I think by the evening of the 22nd, many more people were far more happy that actually we were going to do this thing. And a lot of the time people concentrate on what's going on on the land. Tell me a bit more about the maritime campaign because there are more than 100 ships involved, weren't there? And yes, there's this enormous sea campaign going on with you know, the amphibious force in and around San Carlos, with the amphibious shipping inside and then a, a layer of frigates and destroyers outside and to the sea north and south as radar pickets, you know, where poor old Sheffield had been and then you know, where, where Coventry and Broadsword were. And then further out, you know, there's this uh, train of merchant navy ships waiting to bring things in, to be brought in by the amphibious staff at the right moment. And then at sea uh, is Admiral Woodard and the carriers you know, maintaining air cover over us on the islands, but at the same time having to keep the carriers sufficiently far away that they are never seriously at risk. So I suspect he feels if, if one of those is hit, we're in real trouble. And there's, so there's a great tension. You know, even as a young officer, one sensed it, what's going on ashore in San Carlos and out in the deep ocean. And with the, the benefit of, of 30 years of history now, when you look back at that, wh what do you think about your time during the Falcons conflict? How do you look back on the whole campaign? Well, I think it doesn't sound too trite, with enormous pride, because um, we were very well trained, and we in HMS Fearless had come from an exercise in the Arctic Circle with our Royal Marines. We knew what we were doing. Um, we did it, and you know, Admiral Leach was, was right. If, if we hadn't done this thing, we would have been a lesser country whose word would have counted for less. I and mean, he was absolutely on it uh, with that. And, and you know, we proved that uh, Navy Royal Marines Parachute Regiment could do this sort of stuff. Of course, you went back to the Falklands because you were then commander of British forces in the South Atlantic. Uh, what did you take with you from your experience of the war when you went back, and how did that help you? It, it helped enormously, not least, I think, um, with the islanders who recognised um, a veteran and, it, and it, you know, it was a great privilege to be able to go back and do it. I knew what had gone on. I knew what we were there to do, which was to, was to maintain this very effective deterrent operation that's been going on now for 30 years and will go on for many more. And, and because of, I think, you know, my personal history and the brilliant ship I'd, I'd served in, I knew the standard that we had to 
set and maintain throughout the time. Must have been difficult to leave when oh, you I did. I loved it down there. I hated leaving. Commodore Philip Thickness, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much.